Hello guys, hope all of you are doing well. We are back with another session about Viscot Aldrich syndrome, which is also known as eczema thrombocytopenia immunodeficiency syndrome. And this is an important topic for your entrance examinations like USMLE, NEET, NEXT, etc. Although this does not carry much of weightage for your board examinations, if at all you are asked to write, you will be fully fledged with the knowledge to attempt it. So let's not waste any time. Let's start studying about Viscott Aldrich syndrome. So let's now try to understand the terminology. It is also called as eczema thrombocytopenia immunodeficiency syndrome, right? What does eczema mean? Eczema means atopic dermatitis, wherein the person will have dryness of the skin and also redness of the skin, as you are seeing in this picture. What is the meaning of thrombocytopenia? There is decrease in the number of platelets okay thrombocytopenia refers to decrease in the number of platelets but the special feature in viscot aldrich syndrome is there will be micro thrombocytopenia that means not just the number but also the size of the platelets will be reduced and it is an immunodeficiency syndrome immunodeficiency syndrome implies the person who is suffering from viscot aldrich syndrome will be prone to develop several infections and also recurrent infections. This particular disease that is Viscott Aldrich syndrome is an X-linked recessive condition which implies males are affected more than females. Now let's try to understand the pathophysiology of Viscott Aldrich syndrome. So what you are seeing over here is the Viscott Aldrich syndrome protein. It is synthesized by hematopoietic stem cells or the cells of the bone marrow it can be shortly called as VASP, okay. And what you are seeing over here is the protein which is encoded by a gene called as WIPF1, WIPF1, which encodes for the protein VAS-VAS ligand interacting protein family member 1, okay. This protein helps in the stabilization of VASP. And what is the use? What is the use of these two proteins? They help in reorganization of cellular cytoskeleton. Is the reorganization of the cellular cytoskeleton important? If at all such a question is asked, then the answer is yes. How? Like, let's take the example of platelets. The platelets are formed from megakaryocytes. And what is the function of platelets? They move to the place wherever there is vas vascular injury, vessel injury, and they seal off the place, right? And thereby controlling the bleeding. Let's take another example. Whenever a foreign pathogen enters our body, the antigen presenting cells take a small portion of that pathogen and present it to helper T cells. The helper T cells in turn activates the cytotoxic T cells and also the B cells. The B cells produce antibodies and mount a humoral response, whereas the cytotoxic T cells will produce a cell mediated response. Okay. Even the natural killer cells must have to move wherever the pathogen is present and it has to engulf the pathogen, release perforins and granzymes and kill the pathogen. Okay. If we take the example of monocytes, macrophages or dendritic cells, they will also extend the food processes along the cytokine signaling. So, if I have to summarize, for the cell to cell communication, for the process of locomotion, for the process of phagocytosis, cell division, the reorganization of the cellular cytoskeleton becomes very important. But what happens in Viscott Aldrich syndrome? The VASP, the Viscott Aldrich syndrome protein, will not be formed properly. There will be an abnormally formed Viscott Aldrich syndrome protein, which will affect all these above mentioned activities. As we already know, Viscott Aldrich syndrome is an X linked recessive disorder that means males are affected more than females but however even the spontaneous mutations can also occur the spontaneous mutations can either be small or of larger quantity if it is small then we call it as x linked thrombocytopenia if at all the spontaneous mutations are of larger quantity then it can result in abnormally formed protein or the absence of protein resulting in viscot aldrich syndrome there is also Another type which is called as Viscott Aldrich syndrome type 2 which occurs due to the mutation in WIPF1 gene. Okay. 
Now we understood the pathophysiology, the sequelae which can occur in Viscot Aldrich syndrome. If you have not understood this, I have a better way to simplify the things. So, instead of calling this disorder as Viscot Aldrich syndrome, let's for our convenience call it as Viscot Aldrich syndrome. Okay, Viscot Aldrich syndrome. What is that thing which we drink so often? That is nothing but water, right? So, the mnemonic for Viscot Aldrich syndrome, sorry, Viscot Aldrich syndrome is water. Where W stands for VAS gene mutation and therefore abnormally formed VAS protein. And A stands for the cells affected, that is, antigen presenting cells can be affected, lymphocytic as well as the hematopoietic stem cells can be affected. And the TER refers to the three important clinical features of Viscot Aldrich syndrome that is thrombocytopenia, eczema which is also known as atopic dermatitis and also the recurrent infections. So you know whenever there is thrombocytopenia the person presents with bleeding. Eczema in the sense the person will be having skin related manifestations like dry skin, redness, pain all those inflammatory signs. Recurrent infections because of the immunodeficiency. So the TER is kind of a triad of Viscot Aldrich syndrome. So the mnemonic WATER water will help you remember all the aspect of this particular disorder. So next talking about the types of mutations possible. Although this is not so important but for the sake of completion I would like to once tell you and it is written in your Harrison but however the questions are not asked based on this particular topic but let's however study about this there are two types of mutations which are possible one being the null mutations the other one is the hypomorphic mutations whenever there is null mutation then the disease will be of severe type if there is hypomorphic mutations then there will be a mild disease mild disease in the sense the person will be having symptoms limited to thrombocytopenia whereas in the severe disease, the person can present with invasive and bronchopulmonary infections, viral infections, severe eczema, autoimmune manifestations, severe thrombocytopenia and also leukemia, lymphoma etc. Now we understood various manifestations of this disease. And one more important point which we have to remember in this topic is there will be rise in the serum IgE and IgA levels whereas fall in the IgM and IgG levels. This is having inconclusive evidence but however the questions are asked based on this particular point. So how can we remember this? Uh, let's say that there is a brand of whiskey called as Viscot Aldrich whiskey and if we drink that whiskey the blood ethyl alcohol level goes up and what happens to your mental function? it comes down. So, ethyl alcohol level goes up, mental function comes down. Ethyl alcohol, IgE, IgA goes up, whereas the mental function, IgM and IgG will come down. I think this mnemonic will help you remember that the serum levels of IgE and IgA will be raised, whereas IgM and IgG will be reduced, but we don't know the reason why exactly this happens. But however, retention is now not an issue. The diagnosis is mainly based on the triad of the symptoms that is eczema, thrombocytopenia and immunodeficiency that is the person will be suffering from recurrent infections. Initial workup can be done in asking for peripheral smear and flow cytometry. Peripheral smear will help you identify that the platelets number is abnormal and also to some extent, to certain extent, it can tell you that the size of the platelet is also reduced. The flow cytometry will help you detect the abnormal VASP protein. But however, the severely mutated protein cannot be identified in the flow cytometry. Now finally, let's talk about the treatment aspect. We have to give regular intravenous immunoglobulins. And we have to give prophylactic antibiotics because the person suffering from this disease is prone to develop recurrent infections. And if there is severe thrombocytopenia, then we will have to infuse the platelets. Splenectomy, if there is too much of destruction of hematopoietic cells. And if the person is suffering from 
autoimmune conditions as it can happen in null mutations immunosuppressants would be required and there is a curative treatment too which is allogenic hematopoietic stem cell transplantation and i have a question over here if you are going to perform the splenectomy then what are the three organisms against which we have to vaccinate the person yes correct they are meningococcus pneumococcus h influenza what are the other infections possible in this patient there can be candidal infections infections from pneumocystis gyrovaci varicella zoster virus can cause the infection cytomegalovirus molluscum contagiosum all these organisms can mount an infection so that's all folks we are done with this topic hope to meet you soon with another topic and another interesting discussion and if you have any questions pertaining to this topic please drop them in the comment section below thank you